Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revis Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today's lesson will show you how to create this perforated brick screen in Revit. It will be a parametric object, so you can apply different layout and brick dimensions to it. So at the end, you have something like this. It could be a straight or a curved segment that you can keep the wall, and then all those bricks will generate themselves quickly. You can then go and change their dimensions to achieve the effect you need. For example, if I now select this wall here, I can then press tab to select one of those panels individually. And when that's selected, I can go to edit type and maybe change this overhang amount to maybe something bigger like 75. And that will give me a completely different design. If that's too close, I can go back here and get this value to be smaller. And just like that, you can make it as open or as closed as you want. If you want to change the brick overall dimension, you can also select the wall here, go to edit type again, and then change this spacing here from 400 to maybe 300. That will give you bricks of smaller width, as you can see there. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now, because we do tutorials like this every single week. Alright, let's get started. I will firstly close this project down. And now we can start creating the brick panel family. Just go to Families, New, and then choose this template here, Curtain Panel. Click on Open. And once you're here, open the front elevation, or actually exterior in this case. Now, here's the plan. If we now look at the reference image one more time, we will create this as a curtain system, and one curtain panel will be this. So essentially, for each curtain panel, you will have inside two different bricks in a staggered formation. We can then use an overhang parameter to extend those bricks beyond the boundary of their curtain panel, so that they can come on top of another brick on their right, like you have there, or come under a different brick on their left, like in this case. Okay, let's start creating this curtain panel now. You can do this for any brick dimensions you like. Eventually in the project, you can just change their dimensions using the curtain grid layout rules. But in here, just to make it realistic, I have prepared this image that shows typical dimensions for a typical kind of brick. In this family here, we had to get two bricks like this stacking on top of one another. So the panel height should be 75 times 2, that gives you 150. So let me click here now and change this to 150 mil. Next, we need to work out the overall width of the panel. In this case, I'm going to go for 200 times 2, and that's 400 mil. Let's click on this one now. If I now change this to 200, the other one on the right, it has changed accordingly. And now from here to there, from left to right, I have now 400 mil between those two planes. Next step, I need to now create a reference plane going horizontally like this. We now have to make a dimension like this between these two reference planes and toggle equality dimension. This is to make sure this new plane which is true will always be in the middle between the top and the bottom of our panel. So far so good, I can now go back to here and create two more reference planes for the brick on top. The first one will be here, second one there. And if you haven't guessed it, this is to define the overhang amount for this brick. To control this amount later in the project with a parameter, I can now start placing in here two more dimensions. So, first one here, and the second one there. Those numbers are a bit big now. Let me change the scale to 1 to 2, and now they are easier to read. I can now go ahead and select those two here, and turn them into a parameter. Simply call this overhang. And it should be a type parameter. Click on OK, and now they share the same value of 40 millimeters. We're good now to create the first brick using an extrusion. Just go to Create Extrusion and start picking those planes, locking them as you do. With that done, I can now do Trim to make them into a closed, continuous single loop. And now I can do finish. If we now take a look in 3D, that's a super thick brick there. 
The reason is our extrusion dimension is wrong here. If I now go back to the brick dimension image, you can see the extrusion should only be 112 millimeters. Let's go back to here now and change this value to the same amount. Divided by 2. So it's going to be equal 112 divided by 2. That gives you 56. We can now copy this value here and go back to the one below, extrusion start, and then use the same value here as well. Actually, I forgot, this second value has to be a minus. And now that's doing it. If I go back to the floor plan and do a quick dimension from the top to the bottom here, you can see that's the same thickness for our brick. Anyway, there's more work to do in exterior, so let's go back to this view now. That's one brick, but we now have to get the same thing done here for the second brick below it. So, same principle applies. I can now draw two reference planes now to define the overhang amount on the left and the right of this second brick. Just like before, I can do that using two more dimensions. And once they are placed, I can then select them like this and apply the same overhang parameter to them. Next step, you guessed it, we can go back to create and do a second extrusion from here. We have to now pick four more lines. You can choose to lock them as you pick them. That's a neat feature to use. So three more terms. And then of course, trim them to make a closed loop. For the thickness, let's use the same value from before. 56 here and minus 56 there. If I now go back to 3D, these are my two bricks. I can now save this as brick panel 1. Next step, I want to create some parameters to control the thickness of those bricks easier in the project. If you go back to here now, as you remember, this value is 112 mil, but for now, it's a hard coded value. If I want to control this easier, I need to establish some more reference planes here. So, one here and one there. We can now use the align tool to lock this face to this plane. And then similarly, this face to this second plane. And remember, we have two bricks here, so let's do this one more time for the second brick. With that done, I can now start testing this plane if I move it this way. You can see I missed some dimension alignments there. Let's make sure this one is aligned as well. And now it should work for both bricks. This one as well, if I move it down, the two bricks will update nicely. I can now do one more dimension between these two planes. Make sure they are using an equality dimension there and control this overall thickness of the bricks using another parameter we can call thickness. And because we started with 112 mil, let's use the same value here. And that's about it for this curtain panel family. One final touch is the material parameter for those two objects. Let's get them both like this. Go to properties under material i can now click here and specify something similar to what i can see in the reference image we can start by duplicating this default one there and call this one brick number one i can go to appearance now click on this replace asset button and then use this wall texture material here because it has a nice granny finish that I need. Double click there to place it into the project. I can then close its window and in here simply change its color to something more red. That should do. One final thing to do here is going back to graphics and ticking this button. Just so the shading color will come through in shaded mode as well. I can now do OK and turn this as well into another parameter I can use in my project. Simply call it material, and then we're good to go. It's time now to see this in the project. Let's go to File New, and choose to start from any template you like. 
Because our brick panel is a curtain panel object, we need to start here by drawing some curtain walls. Just go to wall and make sure you set the curtain wall type here to begin with. Let's go with empty so we can configure this later on quickly. I will draw two sections now, one straight and one curve. The curved one doesn't look so curvy, but that's only because I haven't put in my grids. Let's go to 3D for that job now. Click on this. We go to edit type and we can now make a new wall type for our bricks. The key thing to change here is our grid layout, both vertical and horizontal. For the vertical layout, let's choose fixed distance and put in here 400. For horizontal, we can also choose fixed distance, but the number will be 150. Let's see how it looks like. Here we go, this one is doing it. Let's now turn this curved wall here to using the same type, perforated brick screen. They are quite high at the moment. Let me just take them down to end at level one. Here we go. Before we put in the panel, it's crucial as well to justify from where on this surface, our bricks will start to be laid out. Just select the wall like this and then click on this little icon here to configure the grid layout. You can see now this point at the moment is the origin point of the system. So the first brick will be there and then it's gonna get copied across both vertically and horizontally until the full face is covered. I actually wanted to start from this opposite end there. So let's click this arrow to bring it to the middle and then click it one more time to bring it to the left. Here we go. Now the first brick will come from here from this corner that I want and then populate the whole surface from this point. Let's now check the same justification points for this second wall here, the curved one. If I now click on this now, I can choose configure layout one more time. And I can see straight away, this point is already there at the same position that I want. Oh good, so I can click away now to cancel this command. It's time now to test our curtain panel in here, in this project. Let's go back to the family now and load this into this project now. Once that's in, I can now click on this wall, go to edit type and change the curtain panel family to brick panel one. This one there. Click OK, let's see what happens. That's quite nice already. If you zoom in closely here, not only the panel works because we did the alignment of the justification points, those bricks, they also staggered nicely at this corner here, even though they belong to different walls. I can of course select one of them like this, tap select, go to edit type, and maybe change this value to something smaller. Smaller overhang, and also a smaller thickness, maybe 75. That should give you much thinner bricks with a slightly smaller overhang amount. And it did. With these parameters, this panel should be enough to help you model the most common types of perforated brick screens. Okay, if you enjoy this lesson and want more like this coming every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel. For now, practice creating these brick screens and I'll see you in the next lesson.